What up, tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. As always, thank you for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Just past 70,000, so let's get up to 71 quick. Actually, I guess we're almost at 71 already, but anyways. Don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all your magic card needs. We're going to jump into this flashback Rivals of Ixalan. I'm not 100% sure why they have Rivals of Ixalan as the flashback uh, this week, but they do. And it was a pretty fun format. Lots of cool things that you could do. Uh, our rare being the Tilanali Summoner. It's not a very good one. You'll see Ascend is on this card. Ascend is when you get 10 or more permanents on the battlefield. Uh, you have to have a card with Ascend to get the city's blessing, but we'll go more about that later. Lots of cool things you can do. Pirates, vampires, merfolk, um, dinos were all a thing. Might just take the Reaver Ambush here. Solid removal spell for three mana. There were a couple other cards I didn't really note upon, but I uh, didn't have much time left, so we'll just take that into our pack number two. Siren Reaver costs one less to cast if you attack this turn, and it's a three, two flying. So Raid is a mechanic that um, rewards you for having attacked on that given turn. Pillage, do like cards like that. Forerunner of the Heralds is a forerunner of every um, creature type, relevant creature type. So there's one for Merfolk, Dino, Pirate. Last one for some reason, uh, Vampire. Um, they all put them on top. They don't put them on to hand or into hand, and they all have some other ability. The Forerunner was just okay. Probably just going to take like Bombard here for another like good removal spell, I think. Just two three mana removal spells. Red Black was like the aggro pirates, although wow. Hmm. That is a pretty late Silvergill Adept. That's one of the better cards. You'll remember this from, I believe, Lorwyn, right? When Merfolk was one of the main themes there. Uh, two mana, two one, assuming you can reveal a Merfolk from your hand. That draws a card when it enters is pretty damn fantastic. Other good cards in this pack. The two, two for two. That's also a pirate that can get double strike if you have City's Blessing. Isn't bad. Oh, sorry about that. My phone was... Um... My phone was messed up. Uh, Impale, also fine. Okay, we'll just take the best card, which is the Silver Gill Adept, and maybe stay open to drafting the Merfolk. Squire's Devotion is a card I've passed a couple times, haven't noted yet, but this is one of my favorite cards in the format. It's just a lot of value for three mana. Plus one plus one has lifelink for an enchant creature, and then you make a 1-1 one, one vampire as well, so a lot of good value there. I think we're just going to go with the Zealot, though. We're kind of hedging our bets and staying all over the place. Oh, notably, the combo is in this pack. The Soul of the Rapids. This is a 3-2 flying Hexproof. That's right, Hexproof is in this. And so if you have like a Soul of the Rapids and you just slap on a Squire's Devotion, it is very, very hard to lose that game. Resplendent Griffin now. Okay, you know what? I should probably be jumping into blue-white flyers and other good cards. I... I don't like the fact I've already passed a bunch of good blue-white, but we're seeing a bunch of good stuff come around still, so. I mean, we still have a good black-red start or whatever, but I'm guessing that I should be in blue-white. Kumena's Awakening, four mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. If you have the city's blessing, instead only you draw a card. That is strong, but very slow. We'll just take the amulet here and play it safe. Decent number of cards worthy of splashing, so I think that makes sense. Dust Charger has been uh, always solid, 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, but if you have the City's Blessing, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4. Majestic Heliopterus. This is a 2-2 two, two for 4 flying, and that can give another dinosaur flying whenever it attacks. That's fine. Probably just take the Water Knot removal spell here. Some more fixing as well. Protean Raider, wasn't this good? If you attack this turn, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature. Oh, it's like a clone. Wait. Prevent all combat damage would be dealt to Everdon Champion. There's another nice one. And it goes in line with the blue-white I think we might be trying to lean towards. And now we're wheeling the 1-mana 2-2 two -two Pirate. I guess this is one of those things where since the format is a little bit older and it's 
being brought back on arena. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows how to correctly draft it immediately. So you're going to see a lot of weird card, like good cards go around late. We get a dead eye rig hauler here. Another good raid one. Yeah, Sailor of Means is decent for splashing and body. Spirewinder, four mana, two, three flyer. That's actually a three, four when you ascend is also solid. And last few pickups here probably don't matter. Although I do like Recover. Reprint in multiple formats. I think originally in what? Uh, invasion? Okay, well, a little bit all over the place for pack one, but we're just finding our footing as we see what we get past. Pack two, we've opened Crafty Cut Purse. When it enters, each token that would be created under an opponent's control this turn is instead created under your control. It is a fun, like, commander card, but not so good here. Legion Lieutenant, the Lord of the Vampires. There's also a Lord of every um, relevant creature type, I believe. Or at the very least, there's one for vampires and merfolk. Is there one for pirates and whatnot? The pirates one, I think, is the one that pumps power, but maybe not toughness. So we have a two-mana enchantment removal spell here in white if we wanted to. Another Spirewinder, Luminous Bonds. This will just take the removal spell at this point. Oh, my lord. And we're getting past a Hadana's Climb. This was one of the most busted cards. We're going to try splashing for this one. We already have like Sailor of Means for a treasure plus amulet. Three mana enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a 1-1 counter on a creature you control. Then if that creature has three or more 1-1 counters, you flip it and it turns into a crazy land that can uh, just kill the opponent out of nowhere. Wow. Another Silvergill Adept here is fantastic as well. Adonis Climb is just a straight up bomb. 2-2 two, two Haste that can't be blocked for three. It's okay. There's another Forerunner. Maybe I should be leaning into the Merfolk. Especially after picking up Hadana's Climb. There's also another Dusk Legion Zealot here, which is just another good 2-drop. Again, I'm kind of all over the place right now. I think we can be any number of colors. Another Silvergill Adept is nuts. This is the Pirate Tutor. Another Kumena's Awakening. Uh, blue-green fixing here seems good, though. Another Everdon Champion. Wow, another Siren Reaver, too. Okay. So maybe we go, like, blue... Main blue, splashing Hadana's Climb, and then we can either be black or red, depending on. I guess if I took the Brazen Freebooter here, it'd be another way to splash, because it gives treasure. Feels like it's too late to start taking these one-drop merfolk and getting there. Now well, let's just take another good blue card. Oh, here's another fun one. Form of the Dinosaur. ETB, your life total becomes 15. The beginning of your upkeep, it deals 15 damage to target creature and opponent controls, and that creature deals damage equal to its power to you, so... Uh, wasn't this one good too? 5 mana, 4-4 four, four, trample, deal damage to a player, deals double that damage to that player instead. Yeah, that one was nice. This is the 4 mana 2-2 two, two Brainstorm. There's a Hunt the Week here. Hmm. Okay, well. Might have started to move into blue-green super late. I might not end up with enough playables without splashing. In fact, I will almost certainly not end up with enough playables if I don't end up splashing something at this point. My Merfolk count is only three. Uh, this is one of those drafts where, because nobody knew what they were doing, I was just taking cards all along uh, the color spectrum, and now I've ended up with nothing good as well. Yikes. Another water knot for removal's fine. Like, if I have to play three mana four twos... I don't think we're particularly happy with ourselves. Or like two mana one threes that are just merfolk. 
Dire Fleet Daredevil. I guess Thrashing Brontodon is just good standalone. Am I still better off as white blue splashing for Hadana's climb? Maybe. Or blue black splashing Hadana's climb. Yeah, my green is actually not very good except for Hadana's climb. It's, it's just that I have these two Silver Gill Adepts that really want to have more, more Merfolk. That's tough. That is tough. Okay, I'm going to take a black card. See what happens here. I mean, if I just fill up my deck with Dusk Legion Zealots, I'm not going to be upset. Could go like blue black value train. Hey, and we're getting a dead eye brawler here. That's a nice pickup. Okay. So maybe blue black splashing Hadana's climb now. <laughs> Wasn't this card very good too? Path of Metal. Enters, it deals one damage to each creature that doesn't have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. Whenever you attack with at least two or more creatures. Oh. It was very good if you could flip it, but it was kind of hard to turn it on. Uh, what's my pirate count at? Four? All right, so we'll just take this three, three for three. Here's the Vampire Forerunner. Four mana, make two one one hexproof merfolk, and then target merfolk can't be blocked that turn. Don't think we want that. I think we just take another free booter. Okay, so we've turned into like some weird blue black pirate deck. Not the greatest, not the worst. I mean, maybe these Silvergill Adept are generally going to be like five drops, which is kind of sad. <sighs> but it could be a lot worse. I'm sure we'll be fine here. Oh, another green land for fixing Hadana's climb is kind of nice, but I guess I need playables, don't I? Probably just take another random pirate here. This is the Mind Rot that if you have a vampire makes the opponent lose two, you gain two. We'll probably end up playing that one. Three mana, two, two menace that gives another vampire menace and plus one, plus one until end turn. All right, I'm going to run three Grasping Scoundrels, even though I think the card is garbage. This card's also pretty bad, right? Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. Yeah. Well, the plan here is to draw Hadana's Climb frequently. And if we can do that, we can probably win. Let's go. Flashback, Rivals of Ixalan. Awkwardly, and to note, this is triple Rivals of Ixalan, which wasn't uh, normal. I don't think you ever drafted triple Rivals. Okay, that's a good hand. It looks like a 1-2-3 curve, but remember, the Silvergill Adept is a 5-drop when you cannot reveal a Merfolk. Another merfolk. This hand really wanted to be on the play. If I ever see my opponent play the Grasping Scoundrel, I either get very concerned or very happy. color. Jungle Born Pioneer. Well, that's annoying.
three mana two two that makes a one one hex proof token. Whoa, 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 whoa! What is going on? They are playing a lot of colors. Let's just bounce their summoner, I guess. Three mana, two, three, sacrifice to return a dino from your graveyard to your hand. Sure. We'll just take it. I think we're going to play the Adept here over the Siren, I think. Because then we can cast Siren and Reeve Ambush next turn. I guess they're just deciding if they want to trade their seer off. <laughs> Another grasping scoundrel, not so good. Crashing Bronton on double green, okay. They have the city's blessing now, so we're probably going to need to uh, kill the summoner. Although I cannot attack into the Thrashing Brontodon. So this makes a bunch of, bunch of elementals that are tapped and attacking. I guess what I actually could do, though, is kill their Brontodon and just try to pressure. They don't have that many lands. Also, it is just a 1-1, one, one. but this might have doomed myself. If they just attack and make 5 one ones that are also attacking, I mean, am I realistically winning that game? Not really. Like, take 8 here. Yeah! Probably not going to work out in our favor. Well, I will say our Grasping Scoundrels were absolutely terrible versus them. There are some decks that the, sc the Scoundrels are going to be good. Uh, a lot of the decks, they're not going to be good. But from the way I drafted, I don't know if I really had a choice. I guess not killing the Summoner was my downfall. Let's see, I could just kill the summoner, pass. I wouldn't be able to play out the reaver, but then at least we have a flyer to... Yeah, that was probably just a mistake. Again, it's a hand that looks good, but I cannot cast this Adept on turn two currently. At least we're on the play this time. So we want to grab a second black here for flow, but at the same time, we also want to grab green in case we draw the climb. And I think I'd rather grab the green, since we have a lot of black in our deck and we don't have that much green. Beautiful. I think I'm going to wait on the flow. Try to get them later. I 
Three mana, four two. Well, I like attacking into that with my one mana, two one. <laughs> Good value for us there. Another upside of waiting on casting the flow is that we do have like three or four vampires in the deck, so we might be able to get an extra drain out of the deal. Wow, I am very happy to see that. And are they going to attack and race or are they going to try to trade? Okay. So, I would hope to not draw any more lands from here on out. Ah, oh, shoot. That might kill us right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jade Light Rangers in this format. That's right. Three mana, two one, double explore. Love it. Another Corsair. Oh, were you kidding? I have to attack because the Corsairs have flying, so. Jeez Louise. Gross. Man, I just... <laughs> this is so sick. Uh, I just ended the stream not uh, right before this draft, and we went 7-1-7-1 with Crushers. And now I'm feeling like we might go 0-3 here. Okay. God, this Arterial Flow would be so good if I didn't have to cast this to survive. Oh my god. Alright. GG's. Uh, am I running 17 land? Maybe I should be cutting a land. Yeah, I guess I should shave a land for just one more random spell. I could splash the uh, Hunt the Week for another removal spell. That's probably fine. Let's do that. I'm 0-2. Can't hurt. Can only go up from here. Well, that's not true. I can lose, but we can try not to 0 3 at the very least. Oh my gosh, if I 0 3, this would be one of my fastest videos ever, huh? We're currently sitting at 23 minutes. All right, now's the time. We're on the play, the hand looks good. We have a couple of removal spells to clear the way for our one mana. 2-1 attacker. Generally, if you're playing this card, eh, you want the pirate synergy, and I think you're normally red-black and have a bunch of aggro. Mulligan decisions over there. You know it's going to be hilarious in a very sad way if our opponent DCs or whatever and we get a win here and then we immediately lose. We can technically say we didn't 0-3. But would we really feel good about it? No. No, we would not. Wait, they're highlighting their cards. I think they are here. <laughs> uh, this is truly the cherry on top of starting 0-2. <sighs> Really? 
Come on, pony. Giddy up. Oh my gosh. I swear, if they time out there and now just normally take their turn, I'm going to be really sad. This is where we need to fill the dead air. I'm already a dead person inside right now. Baby Hero has hit his four-month sleep regression, and uh, Mom and myself have not been getting very good sleep lately. Man, come on, opponents. Oh, that's super annoying. I'm actually going to exile that so they don't get the 1-1. One, one. Because if I attack into it or a moment of craving it, they just get a 1-1 one, one and then, yeah, everything's bad anyways. Okay. Our little scoundrel doing some work here. And now we can never attack again. Unless we draw Hadana's Climb. That's not bad. I think we lead with Reaver here first and say go. Maybe they go for like a Squire's Devotion on their Winder. Reverse Enchantment and a 2-2 Vigilance, sure. This is good for us though. We can attack with our Scoundrel and then we can Deadeye our um, Reaver back to our hand. Nice turn of events. Okay, so they're going to hit the City's Blessing here soon. I might as well block here because it has Vigilance. That also takes them further away from the City's Blessing, right? Now they only have 8 permanents. I don't think they were supposed to attack with their 2-2 there. Tell it's good. Water not the flyer and smack in for what will be five damage if they don't have anything to interact. Divine verdict maybe on my flyer. Sure, yeah. So they're going to take two, go to 12. All right, it looks like we might be okay this game. And back to dead. Can't beat a 2-3. If they have a land, they should play it to get City's Blessing. I guess it's better to still lead with our Dusk Legion. Well, that's good. Get back our Flyer. Okay. And yeah, we got a couple Flyers coming up. Oh, they're also splashing green. Oh, and that was a draw three as a last card in their hand. Boo. Hmm. Not great. And they have the devotion. Oh. Well, it was looking okay for a moment. That's not bad. Get both cards in their hand, and I drain two. I do think we attack with everything here and then play out the Reaver, even though they have good blocks. I could also just chump attacked with one of our Zealots, but... Too late now, already made my play. Yeah, 3-4 Flying Lifelink, pretty good.
I don't think we want to double block that yet. We might have to soonish, but for now, I don't think it's right. Okay. That's a good draw. Um, all right. I'll settle for a double block at this point. Because I can attack them for six, but they gain half of it back immediately while still dealing me three if I just keep trying to race. So that's not really a winning position, but I will say... Um, nor is trading with both. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Well, now we'll be able to hunt the weak our Deadeye Navigator, or whatever, Deadeye Brawler, since it has Death Touch. I'm glad I added that hunt the week. Oh, they have a hood on his climb too. Oh no. And they drew theirs before I drew mine. Shoot, dude. Okay, well that's not gonna gain the flying ability for a couple more turns at least, but Primony. I actually have to leave back a flyer next turn to chump. Holy smokes. Because I can't double block it. This gets plus X plus X. So they flip it, it turns into a 6-6. Six, six. And then they could make it a 12-12 flyer. My god. <laughs> well, I guess on the bright side we get to see Hadana's climb in action, even if it's not me that's doing it. I mean, if they don't have anything in their hand, they can't attack. Come on, deck. No. Come on. No! Ah, we put them to one. They chump. Oh. Wait, they need to block my brawler here, right? Yeah, that way I don't draw a card. Oh, man. Disgusting, dude. All right, well, they have to make the play. That's a tasty little 0-3 there, my friends. Incredible. Well, I will say this. If you want to see winning in this format, go watch the VOD from today's live stream, because we did well there. This... I don't think we want to talk about this. All we have to say is, I appreciate y'all watching. See you back next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>